तो हम कार्यक्रम की शुरुआत करने जा रहे हैं जो डीजेपीसी के मेंबर्स जो यहाँ पे जुड़े हुए हैं जो ऑलरेडी और जो लगातार जुड़ रहे हैं आप सभी को मैं आज के इस विषय के बारे में थोड़ा सा एक लाइन बता दू की मोअर प्रोजेक्ट इम्पोर्टेंट अदर ड्यूटी बेनिफिट स्कीम्स जो है उसके बारे में आज विस्तार से जो हमारे इंडस्ट्री एक्सपर्ट या जो भी आप हैं एल के जो सीनियर डायरेक्टर यहाँ बैठे हुए हैं पार्टनर तो उनके द्वारा विस्तार से कुछ जानकारी दी जाएगी इंडस्ट्री के रिक्वायरमेंट्स थी लोगों के तमाम प्रश्न इस पे आ रहे थे इसको ध्यान में रखते हुए इस सीरीज को हमने स्टार्ट किया था इस सीरीज के दो वेबिनार एक साथ में क्लब करके पहले ही हम पूर्ण कर चुके हैं आज ये इस सीरीज का अंतिम वेबिनार है और इसमें जो भी प्रेजेंटेशन के अंत में जो भी आपके प्रश्न हो जो भी डाउट्स हो उसके बारे में किसान किसान जी विस्तार से आपके प्रश्नों का उत्तर देने का प्रयास करेंगे तो निशान जी मैं डीजे की तरफ से आपका यहाँ पे इस पोर्टल पे हार्दिक स्वागत करता हूँ कि इस डीजे के लिए आप अपने कीमती समय निकाल करके हमारे मेंबर्स के लिए लगातार हर प्रकार के सहयोग के लिए उपस्थित होते हैं हम हृदय से आभारी हैं और हमें विश्वास है कि इसी तरह का सहयोग आपका आपकी टीम का हमें भविष्य में मिलता रहेगा तो मैं और समय न जाया करते हुए मैं मिथिलेश पांडे जी जी भी इसी तरफ से हमारे कलीग्स यहाँ पे प्रीता और अर्चना पांडे के साथ में मैं अब इस आगे की कार्रवाई आगे का जो प्रेजेंटेशन है उसके लिए निशान जी को इनवाइट करता हूँ सर आप आए और आगे का प्रेजेंटेशन स्टार्ट करें थैंक यू सो मच thank you thank you mithilesh ji and uh, first of all let me thank djpc for giving me this opportunity uh, as always we will try our best to uh, provide on this presentation as well uh, iske pehle bhi jaise mithilesh ji ne kaha ke uh, humne uh, industry ke liye jab bhi koi samasya aayi hai uska samadhan dhoondne ki puri koshish kari hai ye maine last session mein bhi bataya tha ke customs mein recently kafi issues industry face kar rahi thi और मेरा मानना ये था फ्रॉम द एक्सपीरियंस दैट आई हैड इन डीलिंग विद सम ऑफ द रीसेंट मैटर्स के इसमें अगर लॉ की थोड़ी सी जानकारी रहती थी बेसिक जानकारी तो ये जो समस्याएं आ रही थी जहाँ पे नोटिस इशू हो रहे थे या तो समन्स इशू हो रहे थे इनको अवॉइड uh, किया जा सकता था अगर वो ठीक से हैंडल किए गए होते तो और इस, uh, इस बात को मुद्दे रखते हुए हमने ये डिसाइड किया था कि एक सीरीज करते हैं कस्टम्स के प्रेजेंटेशन के ऊपर जिसमें हमने फर्स्ट प्रेजेंटेशन में जो डिस्कशन किया इफ आई कैन रिक्वेस्ट फॉर चेंज ऑफ स्लाइड वन स्लाइड जो हमने फर्स्ट प्रेजेंटेशन में हमने इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ कस्टम्स लॉ पे दिया था कि इसमें हम क्या क्या कवर करेंगे क्या है तो उसमें हमने बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट दिए थे उसके बाद हमने चर्चा करी थी क्लासिफिकेशन वैल्यूएशन उसके ऊपर जो कि काफी इंपॉर्टेंट है बिकॉज अ नंबर ऑफ द इशूज टूडे बींग फेस बाई द इंडस्ट्री are specifically in relation to classification matters more than anything and uh, i should say that these issues are arising because it is not that they are demanding extra duty the issues are relating to penal consequences because the duty being calculated because the bill of entry being filed or the submissions being made there has been a bit of distinction etc and there has been a mismatch between what the department has considered and what the uh, what the business is applied uh, so in the last presentation we discussed on that in this presentation what i intend to discuss is that if a litigation comes up and it gets into litigation how best should the industry deal with it aur uske upar humne thode aspects rakhe hain mera presentation jaisa maine last time bhi kaha tha it will be more on practical aspects because i think on certain parts of the law whether the industry needs to get into or not is a separate question बट जो बेसिक प्रैक्टिकल इश्यूज है वो बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट हो जाते हैं सो कीपिंग दैट इन माइंड वील जस्ट मूव इन टू सम ऑफ दस्पेक्ट ऑफ लिटिगेशन स्पेशली वेन इट हेज कस्टम लिटिगेशन एंड आफ्टर दैट इन दिस प्रेजेंटेशन आई एम प्लानिंग टू टच अपॉन कपल ऑफ स्कीम्स अंडर द कस्टम्स लॉ विच आई बिलीव हैव बीन अराउंड फॉर सम टाइम बट इंडस्ट्री हैज नॉट बीन यूजिंग इट वेरी इफेक्टिवली एंड देफो इट्स टाइम दैट वी स्टार्ट यूजिंग दोज बेनिफिट ऑल्सो इफेक्टिवली moving on to the uh, uh, events in the investigation phase typically when an investigation is taken up it starts with issuance of summons now let me tell you that the authorities and the customs have very wide powers so far as investigation is concerned so summons issue kiye jate hain wo summons mein basically ye starting point hota hai kyunki unko agar koi case darj karna hai to uske pehle unhe dikhana padega ke wahan pe koi issues interact hue hain 
कोई इश्यूज बने हैं तो इसके लिए उनके पास कोई एविडेंस होना चाहिए और एविडेंस कलेक्ट करने के लिए वो समन्स इश्यू करेंगे दे वेरी वाइट पावर्स टू कॉल फॉर एविडेंस एंड प्रोडक्शन ऑफ डॉक्यूमेंट्स डिटेल्स एक्सेट्रा ये समन्स के प्रोसीडिंग में अगर उन्हें लगता है कि एविडेंस से पता नहीं चल रहा है किसी की किसी को स्टेटमेंट भी रिकॉर्ड करना पड़ेगा तो वो रिकॉर्डिंग ऑफ स्टेटमेंट भी कर सकते हैं टिपिकली जो कन्फेशन दिए हैं इन द टाइम ऑफ स्टेटमेंट दैट कैन बिकम वेरी इफेक्टिव कॉरोबरेटिव एविडेंस इन दी हैंड्स ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट बाई इशूंग शोकोज नोटिस can the statement made be retracted yes it can be retracted by the assessees and therefore that's again a very important tool in the hands of the assessees the other part which comes up is the cross examination kafi baar humne dekha hai ke ek kisi agar koi employee ko bulaya hai wo employee ko bulayenge employee ko bula ke fir unse samans lenge agar employee ka samans mein agar unhe theek nahi lag raha hai to kafi baar wo cha ko bhi bulayenge they will call the cha or unka statement lege just to corroborate the employee statement and to bring a concern in fact in the recent uh, few uh, uh, recent few times we've seen that especially in the issue relating to son diamonds we've seen that a lot of shokos notices have been issued directly relying upon the statement made by the employee uh, based on the summons which have been issued so summons is a very critical stage it is very important that this stage is dealt with very effectively we have in the subsequent slides dealt with how do you deal at the summon stage there after we go to the seizure process summons issue karne ke baad agar at the time of importation or later on the authorities of the view that uh, these goods which have been intended to be imported or have been imported should not allowed to be imported then there could be a seizure proceeding which can be carried out isme good seize kar sakte hain अगर गुड सीज करते हैं तो टिपिकली एक पंचनामा इश्यू होता है पंचनामा इज द प्रोसेस ऑफ लिस्टिंग ऑफ द गुड्स और अगर हम उनको सिक्योरिटी या बॉन्ड दे देते हैं तो दे विल अलाउ अस द क्लियरेंस ऑफ द गुड्स जो गुड्स को रिलीज करते हैं रिलीज करने का जो डॉक्यूमेंट होता है उसे सुप्रतनामा कहते हैं एक दूसरा एस्पेक्ट देखा गया है इन्वेस्टिगेशन स्टेज में टिपिकली डिपार्टमेंट का प्रेशर आएगा कि आप थोड़ा टैक्स ड्यूटी भर दो ये भर दो तो हम पेनल्टी नहीं लगाएंगे ये नहीं करेंगे तो उस समय इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कि अगर हम ड्यूटी पे भी कर रहे हैं और कभी कभी सिचुएशन uh, ऐसे हो जाते हैं कि हमें करना पड़ता है तो भी ध्यान से हमें अंडर प्रोटेस्ट पेमेंट करना चाहिए ताकि हम एक एवेन्यू ओपन रखते हैं लेटर ऑन आर्ग्यू करने के लिए फाइनली देर आर दी अरेस्ट प्रोविजन अरेस्ट प्रोविजन अंडर द कस्टम्स लॉ अगेन ऑल्सो हेल्ड बाई द हाई कोर्ट इज दैट दे शुड बी यूज वेरी जुडिशियसली अंडर कस्टम्स लॉ वेरी क्लियरली देर आर डिमार्केशन दैट ओनली वेर द uh value involved is more than 50 lakhs the arrest provision can be uh, exercised the uh, authorities are empowered to arrest also in cases without a warrant where in certain cases for example prohibited goods la rahe ya to koi galat items la rahe hain and where there is non cooperation from the assessee arrest powers can be exercised so this is the process in which the investigation is typically carried out now let us go into each of these phases uh, specifically Uh, what is the cause of action? Typically, जो शोकोज नोटिस इशू होती है या तो कोई प्रोसीडिंग शुरू होता है उसके लिए कॉज ऑफ एक्शन रहना जरूरी है कॉज ऑफ एक्शन हम कैसे 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 कहते हैं तो जब भी असेसमेंट कैरी आउट होता है वेन देर इज एन असेसमेंट ऑफ ड्यूटी बींग कैरीड आउट वॉट टिपिकली हैपन्स इज दैट असेसमेंट ऑफ ड्यूटी इज ए क्वाजी जुडिशियल फंक्शन ऑफ द असेसिंग ऑफिसर्स who undertakes the verification of the classification rate of duty applicability of exemption etc based on the bill of entry file agar unhe lagta hai ki jo bill of entry file hui hai that has resulted into because agar wo assess ho gayi hai has resulted into a short levy non levy or erroneous refund then there is an implication where uh, the uh, then there is very clearly an implication where uh, they can issue a show cause notice the other aspect which comes up in case of uh, show cause notices is the situation uh, where in notification uh, uh, and typically who can issue a shokos notice a shokos notice can be issued typically by the proper officer and there are certain uh, provisions which have been provided as to who is covered as a proper officer for which section so under the customs act hum dekhenge ki kafi sections mein proper officer likha gaya hai so kya is it the same officer who is allowed to uh, uh, issue or take action at every point in time the answer is no it is not the same officer different sections mean proper officer at a different designation and who is that proper officer is very specifically given in this notification 26 of 
एंड आई थिंक इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट ईच ऑफ अस शुड हैव अ रीडिंग ऑफ दैट क्योंकि अगर वो लेवल का ऑफिसर आपके उसमें नहीं है अगर आपके वो एक्शन नहीं ले रहा है तो आप ये उनको बता सकते हैं कि ये प्रॉपर ऑफिसर आप प्रॉपर ऑफिसर नहीं है और आप ये एक्शन नहीं ले सकते मेरे अगेंस्ट में शो कोर्स नोटिस आर रिक्वायर्ड टू बी इशूड विद इन टू ईयर्स इन द नॉर्मल कोर्स और विद इन फाइव ईयर्स इन केस दे आर एलिजिंग कल्यूजन विलफुल मिस ट्रीटमेंट एक्सेट्रा एंड वेर इज द टाइम लिमिट कैलकुलेटेड ये जो टेबल दिया था उसका अकॉर्डिंग टाइम लिमिट कैलकुलेट किया जाता है so this is basically the provisions relating to uh, show cause notices the cause of action involved uh we discussed at the time of the investigation proceeding that uh, there is a search and seizure which can happen now search in the meaning is also means the search of a premises and they can come for searching of premises as well as recording a statement usme kya is implication aate hain customs officers are empowered to inspect any premises or conveyance of a person under section 105 and 106 and carry out a search and seizure and goods thus seized can be released against a bond or security upon furnishing that security more important is in the process of the search seizure they can also record statement under 108 why am i saying it's very important it's very important because this statement which is recorded uh, becomes to become very clearly an evidence in the show cause notice which is required to be issued so section 108 very clearly provides that officers of customs have the power to direct any person whose presence is considered necessary to appear before them and give statement isliye humne kafi bar dekha hoga that wo uh, authorities agar koi bhai chal rahi hai to kahenge ki agar aap ye nahi furnish kar rahe ho ya to nahi kar rahe ho to chalo fir main summons issue karta hu let me call your uh, uh, let me call your md let me call your chairman the answer is can they call the chairman and md yes they have wide powers but the the high courts multiple high courts have held that an md and chairman can be called only in the rare cases where the evidence to be collected is sits with them kafi bar aisa hota hai that md chairman ko pata bhi nahi hoga ek ek transaction ke bare mein in those situations it is not required that the md or the chairman personally is required to be called in uh there have been a number of judgments where uh, when a statement has been recorded the statement is being retracted also and uh, there is a retraction of statement if a statement has been retracted can the department still consider that as a evidence answer is yes please be aware but wo evidence wo sirf statement jo diya tha retract kar diya usko evidence nahi bana sakte उनको कॉरोबोरेटिव एविडेंस भी देना पड़ेगा और भी डॉक्यूमेंट्स दिखाने पड़ेंगे जिससे वो प्रूव कर पाएंगे कि ये स्टेटमेंट पहले दिया हुआ था उन्होंने बाद में रिट्रैक्ट किया हुआ लेकिन रिट्रैक्ट गलत किया हुआ है सो दैट बिकम्स अगेन अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट दिस रिकॉर्डिंग ऑफ स्टेटमेंट अगेन इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट बिकॉज एज वॉज हाईलाइटेड इन स्पेशली इन द रिसेंट सॉन केस सॉन डायमंड कॉन्ट्रोवर्सी डिपार्टमेंट है रिकॉर्डेड स्टेटमेंट ऑफ दी एम्प्लॉज and based on those statements they have actually issued a show cause notice which means they have not actually gone into determining what was the actual importation in the uh, in the padikas which had come jo padike import hue the wo to abhi import ke clear ho gaya to abhi to unke paas wo evidence hai inhone employees ko bulaya employees ke samne conversation kiya employees ne kaha ha is tarah ke rough diamonds the to unke acha rough diamonds the aur son the so that means those are partly processed and since these are partly processed i would want to bring it into uh, the uh, uh, tax net and they brought in a levy and they had issued the show cause notices uh, moving to the next slide is uh, the issue on so once the search and uh, summons recording of statement it happens that becomes evidence in their hand and they will issue a show cause notice typically a show cause notice has specific components uh, uh, which are very typical and very important to understand show cause notice needs to have a specific allegation as to why this notice is being issued second the show cause notice therefore has to consequentially move into explaining as to what the individual is required to show cause the show cause notice also has to clearly determine that because of this aspect this is the demand which is being raised and finally the amount confirmed will be undertaken for adjudication before a demand is raised that's the procedure of show cause notice like lekin aajkal hal mein kya issue hota hai agar wo search seizure karte hai to show cause notice issue kare bigger hi pressure create karte hai ki aap abhi abhi kuch payment kara dijiye wo sahi nahi hai hamare kafi clients ke liye to humne letter file kara diya hai requesting the department to follow the due process of law 
and the process of due the following the due process of law means that they have to issue a show cause notice uh there are certain principles of natural justice which are required to be followed in the case of uh, issuing of a show cause notice scn must be issued clearly stating the allegation jo maine pehle bataya agar show cause notice mein koi allegation kiya gaya hai and in our case uh, ye industry mein kafi bar aisa hota hai ke show cause notice issue kiya gaya hai kyunki ek valuation report is tarah ka aaya hua hai jahan pe unko valuation report mein likha gaya hai ke over value kiya gaya hai under value kiya gaya hai ऐसे सिचुएशन में टैक्स पेयर्स को असेसिस को राइट है कि वो एक लेटर लिखे ये क्वेश्चन करने के लिए कि हमें क्रॉस एग्जामिन करना है विटनेस को या तो वैल्यूअर को जिन्होंने ये वैल्यूएशन किया है काफी बार हम इसका इस्तेमाल नहीं करते पर ये बहुत बड़ा हथियार जैसा है आपके हाथ में जिसको आपको यूज करना चाहिए एट द टाइम ऑफ डिफेंडिंग अशोकोज नोटिस रिलेवेंट इंफॉर्मेशन एंड एविडेंस मस्ट बी सप्लाइड टू दी इम्पोर्टर एक्सपोर्टर और दी अक्यूज All the information. काफी बार ऐसा होता है कि हमें शोकोज नोटिस होते हैं उसमें कहते हैं कि हम इसके ऊपर रिलाई किए जिस भी चीज के ऊपर उन्होंने रिलाई किया है वो सारे डॉक्यूमेंट्स दे आर बाउंड टू सबमिट ईच ऑफ दीज डॉक्यूमेंट्स टू यू बिफोर यू आर आस्ट टू रिप्लाई टू द शोकोज नोटिस देफोर अगेन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वेन यू रिसीव अ शोकोज नोटिस डू नॉट जम्प इन टू रिस्पॉन्डिंग द शोकोज नोटिस पहले शोकोज नोटिस को परखिए उसमें समझिए कि एविडेंस इज द एलिगेशन वेरी क्लियर इफ इट्स नॉट क्लियर यू मे राइट टू दी अथॉरिटी also i see whether if there is a statement of some third party which has been taken would you want an opportunity to cross examine the third party and lastly if the show cause notice is relying upon any documents please write to the authority asking for those documents before you proceed on filing a response to the show cause notice no order confiscating any goods or imposing any penalty or confirming any duty demand or duty can be made unless a notice is served to the importer exporter Right to such notice can be waived. However, it is not advisable. यानी अगर आपके confiscation हो गए और आप कहते हैं कि चलो हम payment कर रहे हैं goods हमको clear करा दो तो आप आपके पास rights है कि आप शोकोज notice ना issue करने की बात कर सकते हैं पर otherwise उनको शोकोज notice compulsory issue करना पड़ेगा. Moving on uh, the next slide is in this uh, one. Ah, yeah. No, it's still okay. The next slide is in uh, relation to uh, seizure, confiscation of goods. Uh, I think we've already touched upon this. Uh, sorry, you remove the slides. So uh, I think there is some issue. The slides are being reloaded. Uh, but uh, the point i'm trying to highlight is in case of seizure or confiscation of goods section 110 provide the power again to the proper officer so again like i said proper officer in each case each case would vary uh, where the proper officer where he has a reason to believe only then he can undertake a seizure and this is very important kafi bar apne goods seize hote hain and we don't even question that does he have a reason to believe if he has a reason to believe two important aspects he has to document that reason to believe and on justifying the reason to believe only the goods can be confiscated uh, the other important aspect is that reason to believe jab hum kehte hain so it cannot be a reason to believe kyunki law aisa kehta hai so for example agar law kehta hai ke its is tarah ke diamonds will be considered as rough diamonds or cut and polished diamonds or agar इन्होंने जो डायमंड लाए हैं जो ऑफिसर है उसी सर के माइंड में ये है कि ये डायमंड तो कट एंड पॉलिश भी हो सकते हैं या तो सेमी प्रोसेस भी हो सकते हैं एंड देर फॉर आई हैव अ रीजन टू बिलीव कि इसको मैं कट एंड पॉलिश बाइफ्रिकेट करूं एंड देर फॉर आई विल कॉन्फिस्केट दैट इज नॉट परमिट रीजन टू बिलीव हैज टू बी प्रूव बेस्ड ऑन डॉक्यूमेंट्री एविडेंस अवेलेबल इन दी हैंड्स ऑफ दी अथॉरिटी एंड हीज टू पुट दैट इन द फाइल एंड देर फॉर इफ एट ऑल देर इज एन इश्यू रेस एज टू द सीजर ऑफ द गुड्स it is within your rights to question the authority as to what is the reason to believe that he has uh, based on which this confiscation is being carried out except for which such confiscation cannot be another important aspect is that agar unhone confiscate kiya hai to 6 mahine ke andar andar unko aapko show cause notice issue karna padega apni industry ke value of goods so high hote hai ke pehle hi wo issue kar lete hain par in case agar 6 mahine tak show cause notice issue nahi kiya to unko farajiyat ye goods release kar dene padenge 
and they cannot hold it beyond six months. That is set out in section 124 of the uh, Customs Act. Moving to the next slide uh, is in relation to this whole aspect of reason to believe. I think I've already touched upon that, so we can proceed further. Uh, moving to the other aspect of personal liability. What we've seen in this industry is that a number of times the personal liability of a director or a senior management personnel has been brought into question. And in fact, in the recent number of days, it has so happened that based on the statement given by one of the employees, because the employee has been authorized by a director to represent the company before the customs authorities, the customs authorities are then issue a show cause notice leaving penalty on the director. In fact, in one of the cases that we are handling, the total penalty on the company is half of that on the director because the director has been brought in on penalty under section 112 as well as section 114AA, whereas the company has penalty only under the first section. I'm not audible. Am I audible now? Yeah. Uh, just a second. Yeah. Uh, so on personal liability, the whole issue is that uh, I just repeat some bit of uh, what I just mentioned that we've seen a number of situations where recent show cause notices have been issued uh, based on the statement given by the employee because such employee was uh, earlier uh, because such employee had earlier been uh, appointed by the director. Uh, the important point that I'm trying to drive home again is that the personal liability of the M for the director has also been dragged in in situations where like in one of the cases recently we're handling the, the personal liability of the director was double of that of the company and that had caused a lot of uh, concern because if the director's name is brought in a number of our directors may not be in India, they may be traveling abroad and all of that can create concern. Therefore, it's very important that how this personal liability related aspects have been dealt with. A few cases have been put in, I'm not going into detailing of that, but just to highlight that it's very important that appropriate documentation is maintained in the uh, 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 documentation is maintained so as to reflect that the employee has carried out and the directors do not play a role in the day-to-day -day functioning of the company's affairs or the import export transactions. Next slide, please. Uh, this slide showcases what is the entire process of dispute resolution. Ek bar jo hume summons issue ho gaya, summons mein se show cause notice issue hoti hai. Show cause notice ko adjudicate hota hai, to order in original issue hota hai. Order in original typically uh, negative hai, to hum uske saamne appeal file karte hai. Appeal jo hota hai, that is called the first appellate authority before commissioner appeals. Commissioner appeals agar negative order issue karte hai, to we file an appeal to the sestet. From there it goes to the high court and then to the supreme court. The whole process would somewhere take anywhere to 15 to 20 years if it were to go right up to the Supreme Court. But typically our attempt has to be that the order in original itself or the show cause notice itself is quashed or latest at the SESTED stage is where the uh, relief is granted because the SESTED, the tribunal is the last final fact finding authority and it's not a, it's a quasi judicial authority and therefore not correlated to the revenue authorities. And therefore, the chances of an unbiased outcome is very effective. Moving on to the next slide. Uh, is in relation to advanced ruling. Uh, while this is not a part of litigation, I thought a very important topic that we should discuss here. Because what is happening today is that our industry has a lot of new products. And what should be new products, 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 what should be new Shokos notice issue hoti hai aur phir pura industry issue ban jata hai. Industry issue banne ke baad isko suljana kafi kathin ho jata hai. To wo avoid karne ke liye there is one provision under the customs legislation which is advanced ruling. Where under section 28H, where before undertaking a transaction. So for example, samjho humare abhi nae uh, lab grown diamonds ki baat kare. Ya to usme agar colored lab grown diamonds are rahe. And if those species are considered to be a little different. Rather than getting into a classification issue, we may be in a position to apply to the advanced ruling to get the appropriate classification or apply to the uh, advanced ruling for getting a proper basis of getting the valuation of those goods. 
बिकॉज अगर वो आ गया तो हम फ्यूचर की दिक्कतें अवॉइड कर सकते हैं सो अगेन दैट्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट विच आई वॉन्टेड टू हाईलाइट दैट्स ऑन एडवांस रूलिंग एडवांस रूलिंग प्रोविजन आर अवेलेबल अंडर कस्टम्स लॉ सॉरी मेरे कनेक्शन में इश्यू लग रहा है एम आई ऑडिबल नाउ एडवांस रूलिंग प्रोविजन आर अवेलेबल अंडर दी yeah am i am i audible is it better now yeah advance ruling provisions are uh, available under the customs law and the uh, these there is a separate advance ruling authority up to some time this authority there was no uh, nobody occupying the office of this authority and therefore the significance of this office had come down but recently because of the new innovations and things people have started reaching out to the uh, advance ruling authority and seeking a ruling so as to have a surety on the nature of transaction that they are carrying out next slide uh moving to the next slide let's go on move sorry i i think there is some issue with the connections uh so this was on the customs legislation and uh, like i mentioned that on the investigation bit the litigation bit etc agle jo do sections hai usme ek mein humne discuss kiya hai ke jo different customs schemes hai mujhe dhyan hai ke uh, बीजेपीसी के सारे मेंबर्स एफटीपी के प्रोविजन तो काफी इफेक्टिवली यूज करते हैं उसमें भी एडवांस ऑथोराइजेशन और वो प्रोविजन काफी इफेक्टिवली हम यूज करते हैं उसके बेनिफिट भी लेते हैं लेकिन कस्टम्स के नीचे भी काफी बेनिफिट्स प्रोवाइड किए गए हैं जो मेरा मानना है एंड बेस्ड ऑन माय एक्सपीरियंस एंड इंटरेक्शन विद अथॉरिटीज दैट दो बेनिफिट आर नॉट बींग इफेक्टिवली यूटिलाइज और इफेक्टिवली एंजॉयड बाई द इंडस्ट्री सम ऑफ दो आर सेट आउट इन दब्सिक्वेंट स्लाइड uh so as we speak today india just recently signed the india uae sepa uh united uh, united arab emirates ke sath dubai aur wo unke deshon ke sath humne abhi ek comprehensive economic partnership agreement sign kiya hai sepa under which various benefits are becoming available to this industry similarly a number of other sepas or a number of other trade agreements jinko trade agreements kehte hain are under negotiation as well as new agreements are being signed so uh, you know there is an agreement being signed with uk there is an agreement with being signed with australia ye sari countries ke sath jo agreements ho rahe hain these will be of uh, benefit and significance for india since uh, uh, the and especially for this industry since this industry does depend upon importation of rough diamonds from a number of these countries or of bullion from also a number of these countries uh the difference the benefit is that no sooner the importation is brought under the sepa the rate of duty which is generally applicable is either partially or uh, completely uh, reduced compared to the normal rate of duty and isiliye ye the understanding of these trade agreement becomes very important now what has happened is trade agreement aaj ki baat nahi hai the trade agreements have been around for some time but the issue that the authorities or the indian industry was facing say for example india thailand ke beech mein ek free trade agreement tha abhi bhi hai wo agreement uske niche kafi apni jewelry import hoti thi thailand se par jab thailand se jewelry import hoti thi ye jewelry ke sath ek certificate of origin aata tha that certificate of origin was the proof that this jewelry is made in thailand and is achieving certain value addition now the issue which came up is that uh, this value addition was required to be proved to the authorities as per the indo thai fta or indo thai fta ke niche 20% value addition chahiye tha this certificate of origin is issued by the thai authorities thai authorities ka jo certificate of origin tha indian authorities unko manna band kar diya kyunki wo indian authorities manne lage ki ye fake certificate hai ab indian importer did not have to prove anything except that the thai the indian authorities had to question the thai authorities and reaffirm that so jaise hi indian authorities ko thai authorities ko challenge karna pada to ye bahut bada samasya ban rahi thi and therefore indian authorities 
started disallowing these kind of imports and denying the benefits of the hard time litigation mein jaane laga ye position ko change karne ke liye indian government ne under the customs law it section 28 da introduced kiya aur rules introduced kiye jisko karota rules bolte hain ye karota rules se kya ho gaya ke country of origin ka determination abhi हम थाई सपोज थाई गुड्स आ रहे हैं तो थाईलैंड अथॉरिटी नहीं करेंगी पर थाईलैंड अथॉरिटी के जितने भी डॉक्यूमेंट्स हैं वो इंडियन इंपोर्टर भी मेंटेन करेंगे इससे क्या हो गया कि इंडियन कस्टम्स हैव नाउ पास्ड ऑन द बर्डन ऑफ कंफर्मिंग दैट यस द रिक्वायरमेंट्स ऑफ द कंट्री ऑफ ओरिजिन आर मेट इज शिफ्टेड फ्रॉम द थाई अथॉरिटीज और फ्रॉम द फॉरेन अथॉरिटीज टू द इंडियन अथॉरिटी अंडर टू द इंडियन इंपोर्टर एंड ही हैज टू प्रूव टू द इंडियन अथॉरिटी टू पार्ट टू इट इसका फायदा भी है इसका नुकसान भी है नुकसान ये है कि पहले जो हमें इंडिया में कुछ प्रूफ नहीं करना पड़ता था वो अभी इंडियन इंपोर्टर को इंडिया को इंडियन अथॉरिटी को भी प्रूव करना पड़ेगा फायदा ये हो गया कि पहले जो इम्पोर्ट होते थे और अगर इंडियन अथॉरिटी उसे मानती नहीं थी तो वो शोकोस नोटिस इश्यू करके एक लिटिगेशन खड़ा कर देती थी अब कारोटा रूल्स क्योंकि कारोटा रूल्स है तो इंडियन अथॉरिटी के पास पावर है कि तभी का तभी ही इसकी इस समस्या को का हल निकाल दे इसका क्लैरिफिकेशन सीक कर ले इससे संतुष्ट हो जाए और संतुष्ट होने पे गुड्स क्लियर करे इससे क्या हो गया कि प्रोटेक्टेड लिटिगेशन जो लंबा लिटिगेशन चल सकता था वो अभी होना बंद हो जाएगा सो दैट अगेन इज अ वेरी बेनिफिशियल एस्पेक्ट फ्रॉम दी दिस इंडस्ट्रीज परस्पेक्टिव विच कैन नाउ गोइंग फॉरवर्ड अगेन स्टार्ट यूटिलाइजिंग the benefits of the fta's the various regional trade agreements and like i said dubai ka regional trade agreement already signed ho chuka hai abhi hi aur dusre trade agreements for example uh, uae uh, uae ka sign hua hai uk australia are just around the corner us ka bhi conversation mein talks mein so that will again become very beneficial so therefore tarota rules are again important from that perspective next slide Uh, moving from karota rules let me now touch upon the uh, mover rules mover kya hai ye ek dusra rules hai which are in relation to manufacture and other operations in warehouse uh jo hamari recently industry ke sath baat cheet hui thi usse hame pata chala ke this industry has made lot of investments in special economic zones because Obviously, this industry is quite export-oriented. But now, what is happening? Special economic zones' the benefits are being reduced. In addition to that, uh, in addition to that, the uh, not just the benefits of the special economic zones are coming down, but the benefit available. or the local in the, the domestic industry the domestic market is also quite attractive for this industry and therefore there is a there is a shift or there might be advantages of moving out of the special economic zone but if you move out of the special economic zone the question comes up that is there any other alternative scheme where capital goods the duty payable on capital goods can be minimized or can be reduced answer to that is the mover scheme so there are two schemes one there is the manufacture and other operations in special warehouse where your bullion or jewelry etc falls under that and otherwise diamonds are covered under the manufacture and other operations in warehouse which is the simplicity scheme both schemes are quite similar and identical uh, but sorry the screen has gone off yes uh so both schemes are quite similar and identical but what are the benefits basically jo jaise custom bonded warehouse hote hai to ye custom bonded warehouse ki tarah hi hai lekin isme aap operations carry out kar sakte hai so main ek example le raha hu that today a lot of our industry members are investing in machinery for production of lab grown diamonds lgds now lot of this investment is coming up in scs एसी जेड में आप इन्वेस्टमेंट कर रहे हो तो आपको मशीनरी के ऊपर आपको कोई कस्टम ड्यूटी पे नहीं करनी पड़ी कैपिटल गुड्स के ऊपर लेकिन जो लैब ड्रोन डायमंड्स बनते हैं उसका कटिंग पॉलिशिंग आज डोमेस्टिक डोमेस्टिक टेरिफ एरिया में परमिटेड नहीं है इसको आपको एक्सपोर्ट करना पड़ता है दुबई या हांगकॉन्ग या कहीं पर वहां से फिर वापस आके कटिंग पॉलिशिंग हो सकता है 
यही अगर मशीन हम मूवर में लगाते हैं इन अंडर द मूवर स्कीम यू विल एंजॉय द वेरी सेम बेनिफिट एंड एट द सेम टाइम वॉट एवर यू वॉन्ट टू क्लियर टू द लोकल मार्केट यू विल बी इन पोजिशन टू क्लियर टू द लोकल मार्केट फॉर कटिंग पॉलिशी एंड विच इज वेयर वेन इन रिसेंट कॉन्वर्जेशन हम जो रिसेंट डिस्कशन कर रहे थे उसमें पता चला कि मूवर के बेनिफिट हमारी इंडस्ट्री इतना नहीं दे रही है एंड देर फॉर आई थॉट आई शुड कवर दिस टॉपिक इन टूडेज प्रेजेंटेशन अगेन moving to the next slide what are the benefits of the mover uh, scheme mover scheme was basically established to promote india as a manufacturing hub to improve ease of doing business therefore it allows both import of raw materials and capital goods without payment of duty where the duty gets deferred and uh, operations manufacturing other operations can be carried out in that facility it permits remission of duty of to the extent of exports agar aap jo bhi goods mover ke niche laaye hain और रॉ मटेरियल लाए उसमें से अगर आपने गुड्स बनाए और अगर आप एक्सपोर्ट कर रहे हैं तो एनीवे एसीजेड की सिमिलर बेनिफिट मिल जाती है इनके ऊपर कोई एक्सपोर्ट ऑब्लिगेशन नहीं है ना तो कोई एन रिक्वायरमेंट अचीव करनी पड़ती है नेट नेट ये जो इनिशियल ड्यूटी में अपने पैसे अटक सकते हैं कैश फ्लो इम्पैक्ट हो सकता है वो बच जाता है और अगर हम रॉटेप का बेनिफिट लेना चाहे एक्सपोर्ट करने के बाद तो वो एडिशनल बेनिफिट भी ले सकते हैं हमने रीसेंट टाइम्स में देखा है कि काफी नए सेटअप्स जब भी उनको मैन्युफैक्चरिंग ऑपरेशंस कैरी आउट करने होते हैं तो दे डू सेट इट अप अंडर द मूवर स्कीम इट बिकम्स मच मोर इफेक्टिव एंड यूजफुल एग्जिस्टिंग सेटअप्स कैन बी जो विच आर ऑलरेडी ऑपरेटिंग अंडर सेक्शन फिफ्टी एट अगर हमारा कस्टम बॉन्डेड पेर हाउस है दो कैन बी ट्रांसफर्ड एक्सपोर्ट ओरियंटेड बिजनेस आर शिफ्टिंग इन टू मूवर स्कीम एंड लास्टली वेन इज द ड्यूटी पेएबल अंडर दिस a scheme so if you have brought in raw materials and you convert it into finished product so for example hamare uh, for lab grown diamonds humne seeds import kiye hai ya to koi dusra material import kiya hua hai this diagram shows as to how this whole process is carried out so for example raw material capital goods etc is imported to agar aap import kar rahe ho to aapko bcd igst koi abhi initially pay nahi karna hai gst jo pay karna tha wo pay nahi karna hai wo sara goods aa jayega मोअर के बॉन्डेड वेयर हाउस में वहां पे आप पूरा एक्टिविटी कैरी आउट कर सकोगे अगर आपको फॉर एग्जांपल सपोज हमने लैब ग्रोन डायमंड की मशीनरी वहां फिट करी है लैब ग्रोन डायमंड्स क्रिएट होएंगे, प्रोड्यूस होएंगे, उसको आप जॉब वर्क पे कटिंग पॉलिशिंग के लिए बाहर भी बेच सकते हैं बाहर आने के बाद अंदर वापस मोअर के वेयर हाउस में लाके आप उसको असॉटमेंट कर सकते हैं पड़ी का बनने के बाद उसको सीधा एक्सपोर्ट कर सकते हैं क्योंकि आप एक्सपोर्ट कर रहे हो तो इसके ऊपर कोई ड्यूटी नहीं लगेगी इनफैक्ट जीरो रेटेड में एक्सपोर्ट भी हो जाएगा सिमिलरली इसको आप फिनिश प्रोडक्ट डोमेस्टिक सेल भी कर सकते हैं डोमेस्टिक सेल करोगे तो जो भी आपने मटीरियल यूज किया था जिसके ऊपर जीएसटी लगना चाहिए था वो आपको पे करना पड़ेगा उसका क्रेडिट डोमेस्टिक परचेजर को मिल जाएगा और अगर डायमंड जीएसटी लग रहा है तो उतना जीएसटी लेवी करके वो डोमेस्टिक इससे फायदा ये हो जाएगा कि इनिशियली आपका कोई भी टैक्स क्रेडिट कोई भी कस्टम ड्यूटी में अमाउंट विल नेवर बी ब्लॉक इन द होल सिचुएशन so that becomes a very effective uh, solution especially in the current times when scz scheme itself is under uh, re under uh, uh, rehauling scz scheme is causing certain concerns for us and the benefits under the scz scheme more importantly have been reduced to quite an extent so uh, this is the benefit from mover like i said there are two schemes the mover scheme and the mover special good scheme where in case of bullion gold and other jewelry items the mover special scheme will becomes available available moving to the next slide uh this slide typically only brings out the procedure to be followed for setting up of uh, uh to avail the benefits of the mover scheme there is a need for filing an online uh, application in annex a there is a need to maintain certain records etc as required by the uh, prescribed format uh, there is a bond which is required to be filed there are the fourth point is very important there are input output norms which have been prescribed and those becomes very effective to be maintained and uh, in case for our industry diamond mein agar wo nahi match ho rahe we should represent to ask for a specific facilitation on the input output norms to be uh, to be made available for your specific operation that you are carrying out declared warehouse premises are to be provided it could be the principal place of business or it could be an additional place of business uh, there is a need to appoint a warehouse keeper who will be in charge and there are various other security provisions that are required to be maintained because 
this is a special facilitation which is being provided uh moving to the next slide this is the mover special scheme like i mentioned for uh, jewelry items uh so that brings us to the conclusion of the various aspects which are covered under the customs like i said humne pehle session mein customs ke introduction provisions diye the uske baad ke session mein humne customs ke uh litigation aaj starting ka litigation ke provisions dekhe उसके बाद जो कस्टम्स की एक दो स्कीम्स है जो मुझे लग रहा था कि हमारी इंडस्ट्री बहुत इफेक्टिवली यूटिलाइज नहीं कर रही है उसके ऊपर टच अपॉन किया और फाइनली uh, अब हम फॉरेन ट्रेड पॉलिसी के थोड़े प्रोविजंस टच अपॉन करेंगे लाइक आई मेंशन अर्लियर मुझे पूरा यकीन है कि अपनी इंडस्ट्री फॉरेन ट्रेड पॉलिसी के काफी प्रोविजन इफेक्टिवली यूज कर रही है इनफैक्ट जी जे ऑल्सो बीन वेरी प्रॉम एंड इफेक्टिव इन रिप्रेजेंटिंग दिस इंडस्ट्री to the relevant authority and to the commerce ministry to ensure that these schemes under the foreign trade policy are very effectively available and effectively facilitating the industry in the best possible way what is important however is there have been a recent few new schemes and uh, certain schemes relating to capital goods which we based on our recent experience with the industry members have realized has not been used very effectively and uh, regularly as much as we would have preferred it to be used and therefore in this subsequent slides i am requesting my colleague neeraj to touch upon a couple of these schemes uh, two or three of these schemes which are very beneficial for this industry and we believe are not effectively being utilized by this industry with this i'll hand over to neeraj to take up on uh, two three schemes of the foreign trade policy set out here over to you neeraj Hi, uh, thank you, Mr. So, like Vishal mentioned, that FTT has many schemes that are available in our industry, and our industry also avails it. But I and you guys must be more aware of the practical aspects and difficulties associated with it, because you practically do it. But I think just a rough idea of the schemes that are available in our industry, and our industry also avails it. But I and you guys must be more aware of the practical aspects and difficulties associated with it, because you practically do it. But I think just a rough idea of the schemes that are available in our industry, and our industry also avails it. But I and you guys must be more aware of the practical aspects and difficulties associated with it, because you practically do it. But I think just a rough idea of the schemes that are available in our industry, स्कीम नंबर वन हमारी आती है दिस इज जस्ट अ बेसिक डायग्रामेटिक रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ हाउ डू दी स्कीम्स गो एंड व्हाट इज द लेजिस्लेटिव इंटेंट बिहाइंड दैट तो हमारी फॉरेन ट्रेड पॉलिसी जो है वो इशू होती है एक एफटीडीआर एक्ट के अंदर ये पूरी की पूरी भाई डीजीएफ के ऊपर कंट्रोल करती है देयर इज अ ह्यूज इंटरप्ले बिटवीन डीजीएफ एंड कस्टम्स फॉर दीस थिंग्स दिस वी जस्ट Showcase what happened. आज के तारीख में भी हमारी फॉरेन ट्रेड पॉलिसी फिफ्टीन ट्वेंटी चल रही है जो भी मार्च ट्वेंटी टू तक चलेगी दिस वॉज ओरिजिनली अबाउट टू एक्सपायर इन मार्च ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी बट ड्यू टू एक्सटेंशन बी ग्रांटेड टू दैट तीन साल हो गए वी आर नॉट हैवन रिसीव न्यू एफ टी पी येट ऑन दिस फॉर दिस पीरियड एंड द सेम वन इज कंटिन्यूंग under the ftp while nishant has already touched upon move on under this presentation i will briefly touch upon road tap epcg advance authorization there's another scheme which is called a project import scheme but jo aisi scheme hai which allows us to import all capital goods under concession rate of duty for certain notified projects Unfortunately, our industry has not been one of the notified projects. Usse hamari industry ko project import se itna lena dena hai nahi. Hamara payda isme kuch hota nahi hai. Tarike se. The first scheme I'll touch upon is rot tip. Now, rot tip was a replacement of the NEIS schemes. The thing is, that as everybody will be aware. हमारी 1520 पॉलिसी में फर्स्ट स्कीम जो स्टेबल आउट ऑल्सो एमईआईएस की हाउएवर ड्यू टू सर्टेन इश्यूज दैट द डब्ल्यूटीओ एंड सर्टेन कंप्लेंट्स फाइल्ड बाय यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स एक्सेट्रा ये स्कीम हमें कुछ रेसिडेंट करनी पड़ी बट रीजन ये था इसका रेसिडेंट करने का दैट अंडर द डब्ल्यूटीओ रेगुलेशंस यू कैन नॉट स्पेसिफिकली इंसेंटिवाइज एक्सपोर्ट्स आपको एक्सपोर्ट्स के लिए कोई एडिशनल बेनिफिट दोगे देन इट वॉज फाउंड ऑफ द डब्ल्यू टी ऑफ स्क्रीम को उसके द गवर्नमेंट केम आउट विद्यू टी डज नॉट रिस्ट्रिक्ट 
the countries are giving a rebate or refund of the taxes which are included. So Rotter scheme basically what it does, it has notified certain rates for every product. Thereafter, the committee sits on it every six months, understands in what sort of customs duty and local taxes are bought by that industry. For example, up fuel curry locally. So you technically, while you're exporting things, you are not liable to pay duty on that. But it is impossible for every person to come to know what is this duty which is given in. Hence, for that reason, they have decided a particular rate for every industry. Whole and generally a minimal 0.01% rate here. But the key part and key benefit of this scheme is that the scripts here under are really transferable. For example, if I earn a particular script of a particular value, if I don't want to earn it, I can sell it for that value, lower value, higher value to any third person and that person can use it. All of this. नीरज जी आपकी आवाज नहीं आ रही है नीरज जी आपकी आवाज नहीं आ रही है हां एक मिनट आई थिंक उनके हेलो सिग्नल्स में कुछ इशू आ रहा है वी कैन हियर इट नाउ यस यू आर लाइक इट्स so complete process hai aaj ki tarikh mein that is completely automated i don't even have to file one single physical document over there what happens is at the port where i'm doing an export they will make an account ledger for me once this account ledger is created every time i file a shipping bill I have to put in on that, that I'm going to claim the rot tip benefit. Once I file the EGM, the shipping will not always, but based on the risk management system is either sent to the officer or it's directly approved. Once it is approved, very to be later based on the value of my goods, which is being sent, that much value will come in my ledger. This ledger, I have to again utilize it. If I don't utilize it after a certain period, it is lapsed out. So it is very important that when my scripts are used to be better, or I do something with it, which will ensure that it is not lapsed out. This slide just sets out how I get the rebate and how I utilize it. So. I will not spend too much time on this thing. Everyone is very well aware of the process. Next, I come to the so, advanced yeah, authorization. Before, before you move in, yeah, and before Neeraj moves into the advanced authorization, I would just like to bring in one point that uh, the Rotter scheme, when it was brought in, it had created a lot of, uh, uh, you know, people were looking forward to these schemes. But for our industry, ke liye, this scheme was effective lengthy because its rate was very low, 0.01% and our industry was already quite a bit into seeking drawback and drawback has always been an effective uh, uh, solution for this industry. Now if you are claiming drawback then you cannot go for ROTEP benefit. So therefore the drawback per proportion was quite higher. However if you see going forward other industry may किसी का ज्यादा ऑपरेशन लेब्रॉन डायमंड्स में है जहां के इंपोर्टेशन कम हो जाएगा इंडियन अवेलेबल लेब्रॉन डायमंड्स प्रोक्योर कर रहे हैं तो फिर ये सिनेरियो चेंज हो सकता है कि जहां पे आपको ड्रॉबैक में कुछ भी नहीं आएगा तो वो पर्सपेक्टिव से अगर 1 पर 0.01 परसेंट रॉट टेप इज अवेलेबल फॉर लेब्रॉन डायमंड्स आल्सो इट माइट स्टिल बी बेनिफिशियल टू गो इनटू दिस दिस इज जस्ट अ प्रीलिमिनरी एनालिसिस बट आई एम सेइंग uh, you may need to keep a check on all the innovative products being brought in by this industry and therefore determining how it becomes more and more beneficial. Yeah, over to you, Neeraj. Please continue. 
You are on mute. The second scheme I touch on is advanced authorization, which is widely used by industry today. So this scheme basically either a manufacturer exporter can avail of a scheme or a merchant exporter type to supporting manufacturer. The basic is the essence of scheme short. When I import foods now, when I import inputs now. There is an embedded duty in that customs to pay can you IGST pay for duty. But what this scheme does, it will allow you to import goods duty free, including all your inputs which are to be physically incorporated in the export product and fuel, oil, etc. Now the limitation of this is that there are certain goods or certain inputs which I use. Which are not physically incorporated in the product. For example, if we have a polishing material, or if there is some spare part of some capital goods, etc., which you cannot import it into the advanced authorization. Another key part of this thing is it is available only to the goods which are actually used in the exported product. So, I can do this because I have an X product clouds and I manufacture my goods using Y product and export that. So, this is again a dicey issue which we all must ensure never happens. Based on whatever I'm importing, there is certain export obligation which is given to me. There is a specific uh, basis norms which are prescribed. I cannot have more wastage than that. And at the same time, there is a specific value addition norm which are given, which I have to stick to. For our gems and jewelry industry, we are allowed advanced authorization only under the pre input basis with actual user condition. There are certain redemption schemes, etc., which allow me to first export the product and take the redemption from a nominated agency. But we usually do not use that because it is difficult to understand how much redemption I get, and the process is quite onerous in that case. So, what I understand is the industry mainly takes pre import sort of a advanced authorization. The scheme is available only for gold of fineness of 0.995 and more not below that. Also, this scheme is not available for export of full medallions and points and jewelry which is from a fully mechanized process. These were the exclusion for the free import advanced authorizations. Now, how do I calculate my value addition? Value addition is nothing and here I've just put down a formula. It is basically my export value minus my import value divided by the wastage norms, okay, plus the wastage norms. So this will get to basically mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. export value, 100 rupees ka mira importer, and from that there is a certain wastage which is allowed. So I calculate that and then I will come to a particular number which is given out over here how much value addition should be there minimum. For example, studded gold jewelry ke liye aapko 6% minimum value addition chahiye, 6 to 7%. For plain gold jewelry, you need a value addition of 3.5%. And for certain coins, it's in fully mechanized process, you need 2%. This is minimum, hota hai, maximum. I can do more value addition kar sakta ho. that will help me out, in fact, for my export obligation satisfaction, but I cannot do it less than this. And these are the basis norms which are given to you. So these are not, again, the maximum which is given out, not minimum. So ye value addition is just old type. Here minimum diya hai, or here maximum diya hai. Okay. Now, an issue which I've always seen in the industry is that, that when we're using adverse observation scheme, our basis percentage actually matches this norms. Itna ho, nahi ho, we usually try and use this. That is not the correct way of doing it. The actual wastage which goes out in the product is only to be adopted. While the department does not generally seek information, etc., 
but they have the authority to actually check the wastage and see if you have actually paid the proper wastage or not. So these are just certain key conditions which are associated with it. Jo mera consideration hai, it should come out in freely convertible foreign exchange. The goods which I import into this thing have an actual user condition that ye mujhe hi use karte hai, kisi third part to nahi de sakta ho ye goods. Mujhe mere inputs ka proper accounting karna chahiye, generally free for benefits pe. And agar bhi ye scheme le rao, to mujhe duty drawback ke benefits nahi milenge. Those are mutually ex exclusive benefits. I cannot avail both together. Uh, Nishan, do you want to add anything to the scheme? No, the only point is that uh, I believe the industry has very effectively been using the advanced authorization scheme. Uh, and I, I guess, but there were a few aspects, for example, the uh, value addition norms that Neera just explained. These were not the norms, similar norms now with the new India UAE SEPA. Similar norms have been reflected under the India UAE SEPA also because these are more uh, accurate and more practical norms. The earlier trade agreements, which I discussed, had norms which were requiring much higher value addition. And that was one of the reasons that those trade agreements were not effectively used by industry members. Uh, my urge here is that, of course, there is no doubt that the GJPC is playing a very effective role uh, when this aspect of uh, dealing with these, uh, uh, when the uh, different trade agreements are under negotiation. But to ensure that similar value addition norms are incorporated into the other trade agreements also, be it with UA, uh, be it with UK, Australia, or uh, I think somebody has raised a question about the Canada. Also, Canada, also the FTA is under negotiations. That's in Over to you. The last which I touch upon is the EPC scheme. EPC scheme basically allows me to import capital goods without payment of the customs duty thereon. Advanced authorization was for inputs, EPCG is for capital goods. This is the basic difference between them. So capital goods has been defined as any plant, machinery, equipment, or accessories required for manufacture directly or indirectly. So now there may be certain questions which arise in people's mind that okay, my machinery I require for manufacture the goods is. ABC, but Satya Muji generator will again, or I want to put an electricity generation unit. Will I get EPC benefit of that? Yes, I will get the benefit of that. But you have to realize that every time I use EPCG, my export obligation increases. Today I have to pay six times the duty saved as my export obligation, which is achieved over the period of five years. This has to be sorry, this has to be fulfilled in six years from the date when I claim the benefit. Now, these are the certain processes which I need to do. First, as soon as I get the machinery, I have to submit an installation certificate for the DGFT. Okay, this has to be given within six months. This showcases that my goods I have imported and actually have installed it. Again, there is an actual user condition to this thing. I cannot remove it from my factory. I cannot dispose it. I cannot sell it. Nothing can happen until my export obligation is fulfilled. Once it is fulfilled, I can do anything I want with that. Every year, I have to determine my average export obligation. My export obligation, average export obligation is not in line with what my export obligation is. There may be inquiries. I'll have to give submissions, etc. And get back on track. Once I complete six years, I get something called as an export obligation or discharge certificate. Really, so this what happens, I go to the DGFT. I tell them that, sir, I have so much benefit and I have so export to export. Entire EO is fulfilled. Now you please give me the EODC. Only after this EODC is submitted, is my uh, bill of entry is closed and export discharge certificate, everything is completed. Until then, 
सर आपकी आवाज थोड़ी ब्रेक हो रही है नीरज आपकी आवाज ब्रेक हो रही है नहीं आ रही सुनाई नहीं पड़ रही है हेलो नीरज आपकी आवाज नहीं आ पा रही है अभी ऑडिबल ना ऑडिबल आप ही आ रही है Okay. So I will not take much time more. Now one last thing to give us concluding comments. Like you can touch upon the mover and movers thing. While ETCJ advanced optimization both go in their own spheres. Going forward, we are noticing a lot of clients adopting for the mover and mover scheme because it is a combination of both capital goods plus inputs. उटिस That's it for my initial report. Thank you, Neeraj. Uh, so uh, you know this was what we were intending to cover in the customs-related uh, presentation. Uh, uh, going ahead from uh, the initial uh, basics, uh, basic concepts on customs, moving on to the customs litigation portion, and thereafter coming to the customs uh, various schemes which this industry has not effectively been using. and lastly like neeraj mentioned the various uh, schemes under the foreign trade policy aur jaisa maine bataya epcg scheme again a unique scheme hai kuch members use kar rahe hain wo scheme ko par kafi members jo unke naye establishment kar rahe hain setup kar rahe hain capital investment kar rahe hain epcg scheme ka itna effective use nahi kar rahe uh, again just like neeraj mentioned about the mei scheme which was withdrawn and rotep scheme was brought in epcg has also been part of a controversy under the uh, case filed by the us in the wto where a lot of our schemes have been challenged and therefore epcg scheme is also on the verge of being uh, uh, reduced or shut down and therefore my suggestion is that if any of our industry members are looking at bringing in new investments and they do not intend to run it under the scz or under a mover scheme they should immediately move in to determine that and make an application to obtain the epcg license they may thereafter bring in the procurements later on but till the scheme is valid please take maximum advantage of the scheme with this i think we'll conclude the uh, presentation on customs we have good time left and in fact i've structured it that way because uh, last time mai questions ke answers nahi de kar de, de paya tha aur maine request rakhi thi ki agar koi questions hai to hame email kar sakte par koi questions aaye nahi the तो इस बार हमने थोड़ा जल्दी ही खत्म कर दिया तो अगर कोई क्वेश्चन है तो वी आर हैप्पी टू आंसर मिथिलेश जी ओवर टू यू थैंक यू निशान जी क्वेश्चन क्यू एन ए में आए हुए हैं कुछ जो कि आपको भी विजिबल होंगे और हम एक एक करके बिल्कुल आई टेक अपन वन बाई वन द फर्स्ट वन इज आर वी गोइंग टू साइन एफ टी ए विद कैनेडा इन यर फ्यूचर द आंसर इज येस इन फैक्ट वेन दैनेडियन प्राइम मिनिस्टर वॉज यूर Uh, there was a lot of conversation which had happened and there was a contemplation of uh, undertaking negotiations are going on between the two countries i should admit that the negotiations with canada are not at as high a level as those are with uh, uk or australia but the fact is that there is something uh, in the works and we should be looking into uh, canada fta soon the second one is uh, can we do advance remittances for import of platinum studded jewelry from japan under 7113 i think this is a very specific question uh, i will need to examine this and come back but uh, you know uh, uh, our email address will be there i'll request uh, uh, neeraj to put in in the chat our email address and we'll be happy to respond to this i don't want to take means just to procure and uh, provide an answer because every ft has its own nuances so let me just examine and come back to you uh, rather than giving an answer right now up front 
देर आर क्वेश्चन मेंबर से मैं रिक्वेस्ट करूंगा की अभी जो आपको ई मेल आई दी जा रही है पिछली बार बहुत सारे क्वेश्चन थे जो अनआंसर्ड रह गए थे और अब चूंकि जैसे नीरज जी ने कहा कि निशांत ने जैसे भी बताया कि हम जो भी अनआंसर्ड क्वेश्चन रह गए हों या आपने उस वक्त उनको अप्रोच नहीं किया है तो अभी ईमेल आईडी आपके पास में होगी आप निश्चित तौर पे उनसे संपर्क करें और आपके जो भी इस तरह के कोई डाउट्स हैं और कुछ ऐसे प्रश्न जो आपको सेमिनार्स के इस वेबिनार्स के बाद में ध्यान में आते हैं तो आप इन इनके कॉन्टेक्ट डिटेल्स निशांत जी का रखें और अपने डाउट्स इस तरह के जो आए तो आप उन्हें डायरेक्टली अप्रोच कर सकते हैं इसमें जीजेपीसी को अप्रोच करने का इन बिटवीन कोई ऐसी आवश्यकता नहीं है आ, अगर आपको कोई चैलेंजेस आए तो हमें अप्रोच निश्चित तौर पे कर सकते हैं लेकिन आपके डे टू डे कुछ ऐसे जो टेक्निकल चीजें हैं उस पर चूंकि बेटर है कि एक एक्सपर्ट से सारी चीजें मिले आपको तो आप उन्हें सीधे अप्रोच कर सकेंगे निशांत जी अब आप आगे क्वेश्चन आंसर लीजिए सर थैंक यू बिल्कुल सो जैसे मिथिले जी ने कहा Please feel free to reach out to us, and we'll be very happy to respond to your questions. Uh, the next question is from Mr. Park Gandhi. Uh, earlier, uh, earlier, one of your slides mentioned the good seeds need to be released within six months, or the importer is issued a show cause notice. My query is: from which date the six months period needs to be counted? so the six months period is counted from the date on which the goods have been seized uh, and your panchnama has been drafted so the date uh, panchnama date is the date on which the seizure will be considered and within six months from the panchnama date the show cause notice needs to be issued and if it is not issued under section 124 the goods will are compulsorily required to be released if the six month period is over and the importer is not issued a show cause notice and is asked for a bank guarantee to release the goods is it lawfully correct now if the uh, no show cause notice has been issued if there is some exchange of communication happening and this is a practical issue and therefore i am responding as such under the law there is a need for a show cause notice to be specifically or okay, neera just put in the email address and therefore please feel free to reach out uh, under the So under section 124 it is mandatory for the goods to be released if the show cause notice is not issued however we have practically seen that at times department would be in conversation or in communication with the assessee and they would have raised certain questions and awaiting certain responses in such situation this has been a ground taken by the department to say that since our communication is going on we haven't received all the specific information required for us to prepare and draft or issue a show cause notice and therefore the show cause notice has not been issued and we are not uh, we are not releasing the goods or at times it may so happen that when you go to release the goods or when you insist on this they say okay we have the show cause notice ready we are issuing that otherwise you issue you give us a bank guarantee in which case we will not uh, uh, we, we we will issue we will not issue a show cause notice and we'll release your goods so this is a controversy which is practically existing but as the law says within 6 months they are required to release the goods so if you were to take this issue to the writ court i can tell you that in the writ court we can come the table and mention that the goods need to be released without seeking any further bank guarantee i hope the uh, question has been answered uh, the next question is please share fta list of countries for diamond and jewelry so maybe this presentation we will just polish this presentation and circulate to gjpc and gjpc can thereafter maybe circulate to whoever is requesting for it Uh, you could also write to us directly and we'll be happy to circulate our uh, presentation which has the list of uh, nations which has the list of countries with which india has an fta or an rta and uh, or a sepa uh, where the diamond and jewelry is covered within the list of products covered therein lastly we have from rainish sir thanks if possible please also share your phone numbers too we'll be happy to do that uh, please uh, i think neeraj's number is already available on the screen and you can write that any further question please feel free to write on the chat box or do write to us on uh, email also and we'll be happy to answer dosto aapko uh, chat uh, chat mein jo hai neeraj uh, nishan ji ke pure details email id plus contact details unki team ke details jo hai share kar diya gaya hai aap usko note kar le aur jo bhi aapke queries ho aap seedhe phone karke ya email ke dwara unko approach kar sakte hain अभी तक जो भी क्वेश्चंस uh, आज के दिन आए थे 
मुझे लगता है कि पिछली बार काफी ज्यादा क्वेश्चन थे लोगों ने उस पर डेलीबेशन किए होंगे काफी कुछ क्वेश्चन लोगों के रिजोल्व हो चुके होंगे इस तरह से इतने ज्यादा क्वेश्चन सबको नहीं आए थैंक यू सो मच तो मेंबर्स चीजों से कन्विंस हैं तो इस सीरीज का आज ये तीसरा वेबिनार था निशान जी आपके इस सहयोग के लिए हमारे मेंबर्स को टाइमली गाइडेंस देने के लिए और मैं कहूँ कि आप खुद से जो इनिशिएटिव लेते हैं टाइम टू टाइम की कस्टम में इस तरह के चैलेंजेस आ रहे हैं तो हमें भी इस तरह से आप रिमाइंड करते हैं कि आप इस पे आपको थोड़ा थॉट प्रोसेस देना चाहिए आपको वेबिनार सेमिनार्स करना चाहिए तो हमारे लिए भी काफी लाभप्रद होता है हमें भी लोग कांटेक्ट करते रहते हैं और टाइमली जब आपकी तरफ से भी आता है तो हम उसको और अग्रेसिवली उसको प्लान कर लेते हैं तो निश्चित तौर पे इसी तरह का सहयोग इसी तरह के इनिशिएटिव्स आपकी तरफ से भी होते रहेंगे और मेंबर्स आप सब लोग इसमें जुड़े और अधिक से अधिक लोगों के प्रश्नों का समाधान इस माध्यम से मिला तो मैं समझता हूँ कि हमारा जो आयोजन था वो सफल रहा निशांत जी मैं एक दो प्रश्न शायद मुझे लगता है और भी कुछ आए हैं एक बार आप देख लें अन्यथा उसके बाद हम जो है तो वो हमारे लिए सर तो मैं आपको बता दूं कि मैं प्रयास करूंगा कि जो लोग यहाँ ज्वाइन हुए हैं जितने लोग ज्वाइन होते हैं मैं मेंबर्स को बता देता हूं कि आपकी डिटेल्स हमारे पास में होती है और जो भी प्रेजेंटेशन या रिकॉर्डिंग हम बाद में वीडियोस की बनाते हैं हमारा प्रयास होता है कि जो मेंबर ज्वाइन किए हैं फुल टाइम है अटेंड किए हैं वेस्टर्न आंसर जिनके पास से आए हैं उन तक हम पहुंचाएं जिससे कि उनका इस पूरा एक्टिविटीज में जो टाइम स्पेयर करते हैं उसके लिए बेनिफिशियल हो सके तो निश्चित तौर पे हमारी टीम आपको वीडियो रिकॉर्डिंग प्लस जो प्रेजेंटेशन है उसकी कॉपी जो लोग भी यहाँ पे जुड़े हुए हैं उनको हम ईमेल के द्वारा भेजने का प्रयास करेंगे और जल्दी ही आपके पास चीजें अवेलेबल होंगी तो मेरा ई मेल आई थिंक एक मेहूल ठक्कर जी ने मेरा ई मेल पूछा है तो एनी uh, आप नीरज को लिखिए नीरज रिस्पॉन्ड करेंगे उससे मेरा आईडी भी भेज देंगे कोई इशू नहीं है और जीजेबीसी के पास भी मेरा ईमेल आईडी अवेलेबल है तो निश्चिंत रहिए आपको पूरा रिस्पॉन्स मिल जाएगा मेरी टीम भी जो भी काम करेगी मेरे साथ ही सारे मिलके हम करते हैं उसमें कोई इशू नहीं है थैंक यू सो मच मेम्बर थैंक यू सो मच और निशांत जी आपको भी बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद नीरज आपको भी धन्यवाद और हम आज का जो कार्यक्रम है यहीं पे आप समाप्त करते हैं और जल्द ही हम किसी अगले नए कार्यक्रम में नए इशूज लेकर के जो भी चैलेंजेस इंडस्ट्री का है उसको लेकर के हम आप सबके समझ हाजिर होंगे थैंक यू सो मच